Hello, welcome to church. We're so glad you're here, and by here, I mean there. You're there, and I'm here, and I'm here where I am, and you're there where you are, because we're being socially distant, but not spiritually distant. Did that make any sense? Some, but I'm really glad you're here. Welcome to Fellowship of Believers. We're having church online. There's a comment section. We would love you to type a nickname into that and comment. And uh, if something jumps out at you or you feel like the Lord's really ministering to you in a part of the service, say so. Uh, as well, say hi to people, let you know, or make some new friends. Let us know if you're new. If you are new, there's a connect card you can fill out. We'd love your uh, information so we could follow up with you. Also, there's a live prayer feature and you can click that live prayer button. But if you click it, you will go into a private chat with one of our hosts where you can type to them and they will type to you and only you guys can see it. So if you go into a live prayer, make sure you type. We've had some people do that and they, they don't type. So that being said, let's pray. Start the day in the name of the, of the Lord and worship. Father God, we're so glad we could come here today to worship. Lord, as strange as it might be to, to not be around our friends and family as believers physically, Lord, I thank you that we can still join this way. And Lord, I know that your anointing has been so prevalent. I've heard from so many people that your presence has been so strong in living rooms and on mobile devices everywhere, even across the country, Lord, across the world, Father God. Lord, I pray that that would happen again today, that your presence would transcend technology and transcend circumstance. We thank you that you are the God of all and that you rule and reign in your majesty, regardless of what's happening in our world. Lord, we pray that our world would be your world and that we would focus our eyes on you. We thank you, Father God, that discouragement would leave as we focus our eyes on you. And as we choose your mind and your eyes, Lord, your joy would replace oppression. We pray, Father God, that if anyone is feeling oppressed today, if anyone is feeling discouraged today, Lord, that they would feel the light of your presence flood around them right now and joy unspeakable will begin to well up in their heart as they worship you. In your name, Jesus, amen. Church, turn it up. Let's worship. Who can stop? 
stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Psalms that the Lord gave me this week. It's about worshiping and praising the Lord and exalting His name. He has really, really given me a burden with this scripture and the next song that we're going to sing. He just wants us to praise His name. Praise His name. It says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. I will bless the Lord at all times. All times. No matter what our circumstances are, no matter what's going around us. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So let's do that now. Let's exalt the Lord's name together in song.
Lord, one more time. of all praise.
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have been in thy hand have Redeemer, Emmanuel. 
one more time. Here we go, Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah. Father, I'm so glad that we could worship together like that. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your name is above all. Lord, we just choose to worship you and we just continue to worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Church, I want to encourage you that on our website, fobfamily.com, the way you found this service, you can go and find a link to our YouTube channel. On that YouTube channel, you can see previous services while we're meeting remotely and even play back the worship throughout the week. I know we do that in our house and, and we enjoy it. So if you have that moment where you're feeling desperate and you're missing peace, come and have church again. Amen? While you're at it, if you'd like prayer today, click the Life Prayer button. We would love to pray with you. And as always, you can continue to give. You can drop checks off. You can mail them. You can put them in the mail slot in the office when you drop them off. And you can give online. That works really well. If you have any questions about any of those things, questions in general, uh, our office staff is still working remotely. And you can call our regular telephone number, 941-957-3333. That calls forwarded, and we'll still pick up the phone. Now we're going to hear a message from Pastor Tom. Enjoy. Hello, FLB family and Sarasota community. Thanks for joining us once again. If you're watching us online, please do us a favor and click on that comment line. Let us know you're there. We would love to hear from you. We miss seeing you guys in person. It's so different uh, talking to an audience of, of just three or four here. Uh, but I tell you what, we miss seeing your smiley faces. And uh, we are praying for you. And we are hoping that soon we can be together again in person. But so thank you for tuning in today with us. I hope you had a great Easter as we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to give you a report. Uh, last weekend was a great weekend all around the world. Um, there were so many people that came to know the Lord uh, that Easter weekend. 
on the platform that we're using to broadcast our service, along with thousands of other churches, there were 10 million people who attended church online. Isn't that amazing? And 69,422 people gave their hearts to Jesus. That's so cool. In fact, last weekend at our church, uh, nine people gave to the heart to the Lord in our uh, 10 o'clock service and our 7 p.m. service online. So be praying for all those souls. And if you're one of those people, I encourage you to get in touch with us. You can go to our website, let us know about your commitment with the Lord. And we would love to put an aim to a face at some point, but send you some materials and help you to grow in your faith. You know, beginning next week, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and start a new sermon series. Uh, but I wanted to focus this week on encouraging you. I know right now there's a lot of people that are stuck at home, and uh, there's a lot of people who are dealing with all kinds of concerns, especially for finances, for health, um, for work. And there's people there's a, they're, they're, that are, have their kids home with her. They're not used to having their kids home as much. And families are strained right now. People are strained. There's people that are home alone right now that aren't used to being home so much. And so our heart goes out to you. We are praying for you, and we know we're going to get through this together. But I wanted to focus today on the fact that we can encourage one another in this process. And how can we do that? And I, I started thinking about how people have encouraged me over the years. And... Um, I have a question. Have you ever had someone in your life that really encouraged you? I mean, they, they did something or said something to you that really uh, ministered to you. And probably right now, a lot of you are thinking about uh, something that's, that's said or done that really uh, helped you a lot. Helped you go the extra mile in life and helped you, your faith to get stirred up and gave you confidence and joy. I've had several people in my life, and I'm, I'm thinking uh, of a story right now of uh, many years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, uh, when I was a youth pastor here, we were at a youth retreat one weekend, and I think we had about 100 teenagers there, and we had a small auditorium, as I remember, that we were in, and, and, and after the service that we had in the afternoon, I, I just felt like the need to start praying for the young people. There was just a hunger in the room, and I really wanted to take advantage of that time to really allow the Holy Spirit to impact the lives of these young people. And so I, I asked everyone to go outside so we can spread out. And so right out there in the hot sun, uh, we were out there praying for probably over an hour together. It was so hot Middle of the afternoon, everybody was sweating. But I tell you what, as I began going down and spending time with each person praying over them, there was a hunger in their eyes. People were touched by God in so many different ways. And I, I just remember, um, it seemed like every person was just hungry for God that day. And I saw some people that as soon as I would just barely touch them, they would fall under the power of God. Other people would just stand there and weep and weep because God's presence was so strong in their life. And as I got down about halfway down that line, probably about 30, 45 minutes into praying, I mean, I was sweating up a storm, I was thirsty, but I wasn't really focused on that because I was focused on praying. All of a sudden, a young man comes up and he reaches across the, the prayer line and gives me a glass of water. Now, that might sound like a, not a big deal, but for me at that time, it was a really, really big deal. In fact, I still remember it all these years later. Uh, and I thought about it, Here's this young man who, who was in the prayer line and all of a sudden noticed that his youth pastor uh, needed a drink of water. I didn't say anything, but he obviously could tell I was, I was uh, overheated a bit and praying up a storm with people. So he, he left and went to another building, found a big glass of uh, a cup somewhere, filled it with cold water, came all the way back out and gave me that drink. And it caught me off guard because I was in the prayer mode. You know, I was in that mode where you're just seeking uh, God for people, and all of a sudden there's this glass of water. And it caught me off guard for a moment. I'm thinking, wow, he, he had to do a lot to even bring that water here. And it ministered to me so much because I thought he really had a heart for me at that, at that time. And that, that man is Chip Caffell. A lot of you know Chip Caffell. And uh, I, I never forgot that I've told him many times how I appreciated that. But sometimes it's the small things. In fact, most of the time it's the small things that we do for people that they remember. And I want us to focus on that. While we're cooped up in our homes and doing all that that's going on, and there's a lot of stress that's going on, 
we got to keep those small things coming. It's those little acts of kindness, that little generosity, that, that little hug that we can give to our family or, or to a friend at times, that just, or that call that we need. If we know that someone's home alone or something, that phone call or that act of kindness that we can give to someone, to let them know, hey, I'm thinking about you. Man, it means the world to people so many times. We're living unprecedented times, and there's so much to be discouraged about, it seems like, but these little acts of kindness, those little thoughts, those things that we do for people, that encouragement that we can give to each other, I'm telling you right now, it's what we need in our homes. It's what we need in our workplace. It's, it's that kindness that we need all around the world right now to share with people, and it goes a long way. A little thing will go a long way way. So I want you to be encouraged to, to focus on our mission as a church during this time. Loving God, loving people, making disciples, that, that still is what we've got to be about. And when we're focused on those things, I'm telling you, it'll help us so much in life. And today I'm going to focus a lot on the loving people part of that mission. The Apostle Paul writes about someone that really encouraged him. And the passage is 2 Timothy 1. 13 through 18. He says, Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me, a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. As you know, everyone from the province of Asia has deserted me. Even Vigilus and Hermogenes, may the Lord Show kindness to Onesiphorus and all the family because he often visited and encouraged me. He was never ashamed of me because I was in chains. And he's talking there about the fact that he was in prison for preaching the gospel. When he came to Rome, he searched everywhere until he found me. May the Lord show him special kindness on the day of Christ's return. And you know very well how helpful he was in Ephesus. See, all of us need at times an onus of forest. I want to talk today about the spirit of onus of forest. Someone that will speak a word to us in our time of need. Someone that brings joy to us. Someone that, that when we're down there saying, hey, get back up, it's okay. We all need someone like that in life to give us hope. I'm not talking here about flattery, like someone saying, hey, I like that blouse. I like your hair. Those are awesome shoes. That sounds great, but that's not something that stirs your soul. It's not something that gives you joy. We need people, and we need to be people, to help others get their eyes on Jesus in the midst of the storms of life. The Apostle Paul definitely saw the need for people like this in his life. If you remember, uh, Paul gave his heart to Christ after he was known for killing Christians. What a transformation. He went from killing Christians and persecuting the church to having an amazing experience with God and turning his life around. Now he went to defend those same people, the church. The Bible says that he went on three missionary journeys to tell people about his faith in Christ. He traveled an estimated 10,000 miles by foot, horseback, and ships. About 280 days in doing this. He was in prison often for sharing his faith. In fact, several of the books of the Bible are written by Paul while he was in prison. Amazing. You don't have that kind of journey in life without coming through discouragement and a lack of hope and the times where you're thinking, God, where are you? And you're sitting in your jail cell. I'm sure he had those times. So when someone like an Onus of Forest shows up and is looking for him and is, is going out to seek him and is bringing a refreshing word and saying, oh, Paul, I'm praying for you. Brother, keep doing what you're doing. It ministered so much to him, and he makes note of this in the scriptures. In fact, Paul mentions several people who have done this for him. In 1 Corinthians 16, Paul said the, the same of the household of Stephanus. He said that they had a ministry of the saints. And in 1 Corinthians 16, 18, he said, For they refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge such men. He also mentioned a man named Philemon. And you might pronounce that filet mignon if you're really hungry. That sounds good right now, doesn't it? <laughs> Philippians 1, 7 says, 
For we have great joy and, con and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. He's talking about this man and saying, man, what you've done has refreshed us. Thank you so much. And in verse 20, he says, yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. I want you to hear this part of this. Let's keep this verse up a second. He says, let me have joy from who? From you. So yet we all want joy from the Lord, but there's, there's times in life, so many times when God's spirit comes inside of us and God's light is shining inside of us and that light has to go somewhere and it shines to others. And that's why Paul is saying to Philemon, there is something inside of you. I want that. Give it to me. I need that joy. I've, I've gone through a hard journey. Give me that. It refreshes me. Someone that he wanted to be around, he just wanted to hang around this guy because it blessed him. I don't know if you've had people like that in your life. I've had people like that, and I tell you, it's a lot of fun. I've got friends that I uh, don't get to hang out around too much. But when we get together, we were best friends all through high school, um, actually in middle school and some in elementary school too. have been lifelong friends. And we might not have been together for years sometimes with some of them, um, but the minute we get together, we can start laughing and making fun of each other, and it's the instant, like, right, we can say anything to each other, and it's okay. It's refreshing. And I love people like that in my life. I, I, I recently went on a trip with one of those guys, and we laughed all weekend, uh, had a great time. And I tell you, that's, that's good to have people like that in our lives, and it's good to be people like that for others. Sometimes we need a refreshing word. Someone who can give us something that, where they're looking beyond their own personal needs and frustrations to see the needs in other people. I think all of us want that in others. We're looking for people like that to pour into us. The problem is when we're looking so much for someone to pour into us, so often we're not looking to pour into others. In other words, we need to be an onus of force for other people and not just look for someone to be that for us. I found that principle so true in life. If I'm having a problem with my finances, something about it doesn't make sense, but I find someone to give or I find something to give to and God blesses me. If I'm feeling like a victim, then I need to help other people and, and go out of my way to serve them and somehow that, that feeling goes away. And there's something about giving in the very area that you feel like you're needing in, that God will bless you as we turn our eyes onto Jesus. When we focus on others, there's a promise that God gives us. That's so true. There's a promise that comes when we focus on other people. Proverbs 11, 25, it says, the generous soul will be made what? Rich. I'm not talking about money here. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. In other words, as we, as we give out to other people, there's something that's so good that comes back to us. If we hold it all in, and we're thinking so much about ourselves so much, even in this time when there's, there's so much worry and confusion and things going on, we can be so focused on that stuff that we forget that maybe I should call this person. Maybe I should drop by some groceries over to these people. Maybe I should text this person is we all can really focus on meeting the needs of others. We'll all get through this time together because we're family. We say that all the time in our church. That's what a family does. You help each other through hard times. Luke 6, 38, it says another way. It says, give, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure, oh boy, the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Wow, what a principle in the word. Another scripture says, if we show sparingly, we'll reap sparingly, right? If we give a little, we get a little back. If we give a lot, we can get a lot back. Now let me talk to you about that for one second. The motive in all of this is not, if I give a lot here, I'll give a lot back. The motive is always, Loving God, loving people, making disciples. And so often we think about these scriptures, we think about money. If I give X amount in the tithe, then that means next week I'll have a double amount back. Uh, yeah. 
It just doesn't happen that way. Not often. But what I've found is that when I'm, I've been faithful with my tithes for many years now, and when I really, really need money, God has a way of making something happen. I, I can't explain it. Um, somebody will drop money by someday, or an extra pay week comes through that I forgot about, or um, I get something in the mail I wasn't expecting, or a bill I had to pay I don't have to pay. Things like that happen. But when we're faithful to God, he brings things back into our life. And the key is being faithful and having the right motives at heart while we're doing this. You know, last week I talked about how the Israelites, God told the Israelites that he would uh, save them and deliver them and redeem them and restore them. I talked about that in Exodus 6, 6 and 7. A few days ago, Pastor Chris and I were talking about this, and he reminded me the fact that their response to this passage wasn't a good one. In fact, in Exodus 6, 9, let's, let's read that. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said. Again, what did he say? He's going he's to save them, deliver them. He's going to redeem them and restore them. This is two verses later. But they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Isn't that, isn't that something? Here, God is saying, I'm going to do these great things for you. And they're like, can't even hear it. Don't believe you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever said that, have someone tell you that, here's a great word and it sounds so good, it's a good report, and you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I think if we're honest, Many or most, if not all of us, have been there at times when we're just not feeling it. We're not seeing it. We've, we've lost hope. We've lost purpose. And we're so discouraged by what's happened in the past that we can't see the miracle in our life or in other people. Friend, that's a, that's a, that's a tough place to be. And I sense that as so, many are, so much is going on with health and finances and kids and so much right now that it's easy to get there in this season of life. As your pastor, my heart is just going out to you saying, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Have hope. God's going to get through this with you and God's going to use us all together. God's doing great things in the midst of all that's going on. In the midst of this, we need to believe the word of the Lord that he is our redeemer. And just like he said this to the Israelites, he's saying it to us. Yes, I can save you. I can deliver you. I can redeem you. I can restore you. And he can do that right now today. If you've lost your joy, if you've lost your hope, if you're frazzled, if you're anxious, if you've got fear in your life, God can help you with that. God can help me with that right now. You see, we need encouragers. People see the best in each other. People help us to focus on the Lord. Someone that will give a glass of water to someone who's thirsty. See, when we step out of that victim mentality that we sometimes get into, or that mentality of how we can judge other people, when we step out of those kind of mentalities and we have the mentality of just really loving people as God loves them, it's liberating. And like I said several weeks ago before this really hit and we couldn't meet together in person, you might remember if you were in our service that week, back in the mid-April, I think it was, I encourage us all to have grace for each other during this time. We don't know what people are going through or what they're facing. This is, this is a time to have grace for one another. See the best in each other, to help each other out. There's a quote here that says, God has great things for your life. Move past the obstacles of fear, anxiety, cynicism, negativity, and control. Those are things right now that the devil is working over our lives. He's trying so much to get us involved in these areas, to get us focused on these things. Why? Because we hear it in the news and we see it and we're looking at our bank accounts and we're, we don't see relief from things and so we're, we're trapped sometimes in this world. And I'm telling you, it is a trap of the enemy. But with God, all things are possible and, and God says he makes us more than conquerors and we, he also says that we can find peace and rest and hope and a refuge and a fortress in him. So that's what we need to focus on. 
Ask God to give us a spirit of wisdom and an empowering spirit to help other people in this time as well. Get that expectancy for God to do something great in you during this time and through you during this time. How we can help other people. Uh, help other people. So how do we move from this mentality of being focused so much on all the stuff that we're in to helping other people? Well, the answer is found in the passage that I read in the beginning, the first part of that we're going to read again, 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14. Paul says this, and it's a, boy, such a good scripture. Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me. A pattern shaped by what? Faith and love that you have in what? In Christ Jesus. Not through ourselves or by our bank account or by our job or by this relationship. It's anchored to faith and love in Jesus Christ. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. that it says, carefully guard the precious truth. There's that word that we talked about last week. That precious truth, or two weeks ago, sorry, that has been entrusted to you. So friends, let's take this scripture to heart. Let's focus on this wholesome teaching from the Bible, shaped by our faith in Christ. And remember this, let's just be anchored by truth of our faith as we're led by the Spirit to be light to others during this dark time. This is a time to really be led by the Spirit of God. To ask God, to, God, what can I do today? And God, what word can you give me today? Lord, what, how, can I, how can I do more for other people? Lord, how can I feel your strength myself? And just be honest with God. If you're weak, say, God, I am weak. I'm overwhelmed. I don't see the answers. I have found when I go to God, I'm just totally honest. He already knows that stuff anyway. Allow him to pour into your life and just wait on him. So often in prayer, we're just talking and talking and talking. We go away. And it was never a two-way conversation. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we need to have that time in faith that we're not just talking, but listening and allowing God to pour into our spirit so that we can be strong and help other people during this time. Today, maybe you're someone that needs encouragement. And we would love to pray for you. In fact, every time we have this broadcast live on Sunday, Sunday morning at 10 and 7 p.m., we have someone waiting, hosts that are waiting to pray with people, to help them, to talk with them however we can. In fact, if you need prayer right now, just click that button that says Request Prayer. And one of our hosts, one of our team members from our church will be glad to have a private chat with you Um, about whatever your prayer need is. No one else will see it, but the two of you can talk and and pray about whatever is on your heart, and we would love to do that. If you're lacking joy right now, I want to encourage you to, to really examine your life and think about how you are right now with your relationship with God. If it's been a while since you've really had that relationship with God and you're really close with Him, or perhaps you've never connected with God as a son or daughter, and to go to him as a father. Perhaps you've never had that kind of relationship. I can tell you, friend, that it's so needed during this time to have that relationship with God who helps us and encourages, who speaks to us, who who strengthens our spirit. If you're away from God and you want to commit or recommit your life to Christ, I encourage you right now, I'm going to pray a prayer. I would love for you to repeat this prayer after me wherever you're at. Just just pray this prayer from your heart. And I, and I know that as you're doing that, as you're connecting with God, God is hearing you and he's seeing your heart. So let's pray together right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to the cross for me. I repent of my sins, Lord. I ask you, God, to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, help me to live for you, God, and to grow in relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me peace today and helping me to be a light for you wherever I go. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God, if you just committed or recommitted your heart to God just then, I just am so thankful 
that you've done that. We would love to celebrate this with you. And we could do that by, if you would do us a favor on the screen there, if you're watching this live on Sunday, you can click the button that says, raise my hand. And after you do that, click the button that says, request prayer. And so that way we can get your information. We would love to send you information about how to grow in your faith or just again, to be able to pray with you and talk with you a little bit. Uh, we miss you. We miss connecting with people. So, you know, we're, we're happy to spend as long as we need to praying with people and helping them however we can. Um, but if you just gave your heart to the Lord today, man, thank you so much for letting us just be part of that with you and celebrate that with you. We're so thankful that you are uh, listening to God today and doing that. Before we go, I, I like to do, as I always do, and just pray a prayer of blessing over you and that God would encourage you today. And I have a scripture that God gave me today to pray over you as well. So let's pray one more time. God, I thank you so much for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are for us, not against us. Lord, thank you, God, that you give us peace in the midst of storms of life. Father, I pray for peace and strength and healing and for resources to all those that are hearing my voice today. God, that you would bless and keep them. And God, there's anyone out there still that, that's not right with you, God. Let them hearts turn to you, Lord God. I pray, God, that you would reach out to them, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit go before them. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, as we go deeper with you in our life, with you, Lord, each and every week, God, we thank you, Lord, that you're always there, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for all the firefighters and the policemen and the, uh, the emergency workers, Lord Jesus, all the first responders, all the health care workers and our government officials. There's so many on the front lines doing their best to make the best decisions. We pray for them. We're not against them. We're for them. We're thankful for them, Lord God, for all the hard work that they're doing. We ask you, Lord, to be with everyone and protect them in the name of Jesus. We pray for an end to this pandemic of this coronavirus in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for restoration, that people would be delivered, that the people are suffering right now from it, God, would be resurrected and strengthened right now in Jesus' name. Get them off those beds, God, where they're sick. God, raise them up, we pray. God, we believe in signs and wonders and miracles in Jesus' name. We thank you for that, Lord God. Do a mighty work in everyone's life, God. For those who are out of work right now, God, Lord, may you provide for them supernaturally, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that. And the scripture you gave me, Lord God, is Philippians 4, 6 and 7. We talked about this last Wednesday and it really stuck with me. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace, the peace of God, which surpasses all all understanding. Let it guard your hearts. Let it guard your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, Father, I pray that scripture. God, may we be guarded with our faith, Lord God. May we carefully guard the truth that we have. May we have the peace of God in our life, God. May we not be ruled by fear and anxiety and all that's happening around us, but God, let us cling to you, our anchor, and Father, we thank you, God, for the great things you're doing in the midst of this, God. And we thank you, God, Lord, that someday, really soon, we'll be back together celebrating you, Lord God, and celebrating each other in this sanctuary, God. And we bless our brothers and sisters and all the other churches out there around the world who are preaching your word. May you strengthen every church, Lord God. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Please be sure to go to FLBfamily.com for all the links to our social media to see past services or to see this service again, to share links uh, of our services to other people um, and all the different things that our ministries are doing. Um, go to that page and it'll give you all the information you need from there. But thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. God bless you all. Hope to see you again this next week. God bless. Amen. What a great message from Pastor Tom today. Just want to encourage you all to be outwardly focused. Look for opportunities to encourage people around you. You know, my dad always said, you will not find what you're not looking for. So look for it. Keep your eyes open and don't be in too big a hurry. The Lord will give you plenty of opportunities. Amen? Amen. So glad you could join us today, church. We'll stick around for a few minutes to finish any prayers uh, that we're in the middle of right now. 
comment for just a minute or two longer and, and say hi to everybody. Join us here 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. weekly while we're not meeting in person. And Tom and Rhoda will be on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Also, if you have children or teenagers, FOBfamily.com has tons of links and resources for your kids and your teens. Marco and Lisa and Nathan and Marinda are doing a fantastic job staying tuned in to your family and your children. So make sure you avail yourself of those resources. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. See you again.